Um, welcome everybody. It's December the 1st, 2020. I'll bring this bring council meeting to order. Resolve the agenda for the December 1st, 2020 regular meeting of council be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor White, second by Deputy Mayor Tony. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <coughs> Resolve the minutes of the November 17, 2020 regular council meeting and the November 24, 2020 committee of the whole meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Moving down to 6.1, result of the November 10th, 2020 letter from Swan Lake Watershed District be received. Moved by Council Delorier, second by Council White. Discussion? Council Memorial. Uh, do we know why they have a extra surplus as to where they're going with that money? Council Delorier is a representative on the board. Since it's, since it's inception, there's been, uh, they've, uh, uh, collected about ten thousand dollars a year more than what their programming is for. They've been putting that away ever since, basically as a reserve. So, uh, and it's just been that way since since the inception that they've, uh, they've they they were hoping that at some point the provincial government would increase their share of the program and they would have money to to be able to say, okay, we can now match you um, without having to go back to the municipalities. But that's never never happened. I guess there, at one time there was discussion of that happening, but it's never happened. So now that money's just been sitting there. So in my mind, paying off anything that's costing you interest is a good thing. Like you said, like they say, it's going to free up ten thousand dollars for actual programming. So. Comes are great. You're still muted. And I got it. Two things. Um, the first is, um, how does this affect if there's a dissolution for some reason? Do we know? Um, I couldn't tell you that. I, I guess if there's a true dissolution as in it doesn't exist anymore, um, the assets would be di divided up amongst the partners. If it's a, if it's a dissolution of the fact that one partner pulls out, I, th I think when you pull out, you don't you don't get anything back from it. If the if the watershed continues to exist, there's there's nothing in in, in there that gets any partner that's pulling out anything back. So that then then why? Have we? I, I'm mystified by why the town of Swan River would perpetually agree to overpay. I don't understand because we could have matched the funds anyway. Doesn't make any sense to me. I, I guess we'll have to ask each one of us why we've agreed to do that for the past number of years. Yeah, I. That's the budget that's always came as it, before us has always had that that built into it. I don't remember seeing a budget. All I remember seeing is the allocation. But um, which brings me to the last point: Should we talk about the allocation with them again? Is there any purpose in it? Uh, what was that term? That uh, agreement that we had. Um, well, basically, whatever they set, set as the budget, we pay uh, based on the assessment from twenty thirteen or whatever that that was. But on uh, Councillor Gray's uh, question, um, I remember when we were sitting in that room discussing all that and the, and the options, that it was something that they would hear us if we wanted to talk or go back to it again. Yeah, I, I guess but it's only been you know nine months into this current one. I don't know if, if there's going to be after. I think they may be probably, but you know, I, I, I don't. I, I still believe in our original point, but we lost on it. I don't know if nine months later there's going to be any appetite for them to reopen it, especially on the provincial government side. They just they just finished all this, 
Well, I guess the resolution is is on this specific item. The item that Councillor Gray's bringing up, I guess, uh, probably wise for us to discuss at a town meeting. And the sure. strategy is to move forward. Is that everything, Councillor Gray? It is. Okay. Uh, Councillor White. Uh, Councillor DeWay, do you know what the balance is of that reserve fund, whatever it is? It was, I, I would have to check, but I believe right. it was in the six figures. So. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Let's carry. Resolve building permits 9920 through 120 with a total estimated value of $64,840 be received. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Mayor Tony. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor White, seconded Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Councilor White? Yeah, Mr. Poole, there's a comment in there somewhere relative to taking clay out to the landfill to be a buried, or do they put that in a separate pile for potential use in the future? Uh, it, it's both, I guess. Uh, it's for whenever the contractor wants to use it, but it is piled up to be used in the future, yeah. Okay, thank you. Anything further, Council Memorial? Uh, Mr. Poole, I, I read here that we've sold both Minnetonas Bozeman and Swan Glen West uh, a number of yards of winter sand. Um, how is that affecting our pile? Do we have sufficient uh, quantity to last us the winter? Yeah, we knew that they asked uh, in the springtime, so extra was ordered, and they we make sure we covered our costs plus an admin fee. Okay, thank you, Councilor Gray. This actually arises from the from Mr. Ganita's report. We we um, ABs from um, Campbell construction is that because they're a regular supplier do we tender that how did that come to be yeah every every uh early spring we tender out all of our material for the for that for the year and, okay. and that's it yeah it's tendered <laughs> that was the answer thank you perfect for the discussion all in favor opposed carry Seven two one. Result of the October two thousand and twenty Swan River Handy Transit Van report be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Let's carry. Seven point three. Council and see a report. <clears throat> we'll start with Councilor Gray. You're muted. Okay, so that was a total waste. Um, I don't have a lot to report. I think we had a cow meeting. I've had some settlement services meeting. Um, I don't think most of the other committees we've had have had meetings. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, <laughs> Deputy Mayor and Tony. Like Councillor Gray said, we did have our cow meeting and uh, I didn't have any other meetings to attend, so I don't have uh, anything to report this time around. Okay, uh, Councillor Friesen. Uh, just the meeting with the uh, minister which I will not actually comment on. <clears throat> Wasn't happy, anyway. Okay. Well, I don't know, I just felt like she should have been there, not the deputy. We made arrangements to meet, and uh, where was she? She had a week to get ready for us. 
Anyway, sometimes I call. Sometimes I call the lawyer. That's what I need to do. I understand, but I still didn't like. Okay, all right. Uh, that's everything. That's everything. Okay, thank you, Councilor Morio. Um, last week, uh, I guess we, we all or a number of us attended the uh, AMM meeting virtually, uh, which was different. Um, which was normally uh, a multi-day event, which was just uh, turned into a couple hours to get the essential businesses done. Um, after that, uh, later that afternoon, we had a meeting uh, with the Department of Justice representatives, um, as Council Friesen's um, said. Um, with another minister, we thought we would be potentially meeting with the minister himself, but he just uh, sent some uh, Justice uh, Department representatives and uh, we talked our concerns with them and they relayed up forward. Um, we also had a meeting um, with other councils um, that are members of the, the RISE uh, where we talked of potential uh, projects and directions for the organization. Um, also had a meeting, um, as uh, Council Friesen uh, mentioned, with uh, the Minister of Municipal Affairs with her uh, Deputy Minister and department staff, um, where she was uh, absent also, but uh, they will relay uh, some of the concerns that we brought forward and a hot button topic uh, regarding land zoning uh, or rezoning here in town uh, for us, uh, bring forward to the appropriate department and our community of the whole meeting last week. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Okay. Lots of mini meetings uh, on the 18th. So remember PMH and it just keeps coming up with COVID if we talk about more than anything and the response we all have as citizens to not spread that virus it's, it's pretty simple try to avoid people and in the evening we had the shared service meeting with the uh, Swan Valley West we talked about uh, the water service possibilities the fire hall and the wellness center another PMH meeting with uh, the mayor and myself and Jerry Gattinger looking at recruiting medical professionals. It was an embryonic meeting, and I'll follow up a little more about that shortly. Then the AMM on the 23rd, a virtual meeting, interesting, we talked about already. The RISE meeting, uh, that, that was always uh, enlightening, with trying to work with our, our members, or wanting to work with our members in the Valley. Then the COW meeting, where we talked about uh, our new CIOs, we'll talk a little more later, and recreation. In a PMH meeting, and, and the imperative, what came up with that one again, the, the COVID update. But hospitals are closing now because they don't have enough staff to run into the peak and to look after personal care homes. And there's two in our area where that's happened already. So it, it, it's so beyond a few uh, some older people my age, for example, passing away. It's all the personal care home staff and elective surgeries. You have a, a cancer in your body, you may have to wait months to get that looked at because there's no room in the hospital so that's so important uh, minister squires meeting uh deputy, deputy minister gray spoke again virtual talking about the ditch uh with swan valley west possible minister of justice meeting was just talked about and then on the 30th uh jerry gattinger and one of the staff the mayor and i met and we have all sorts of ideas shared about recruiting medical professionals specifically not just doctors the nurses, physiotherapists, we talked about the incentives. Uh, I, I think that it all boils out, they're all relatively close to the thing that the different places are doing. 4,000 bucks for new grads, 4,000 for a specific spot, uh, Northern allowances. So it's a competitive world out there for us to access nurses. So I know uh, his worship and his board are talking about the possibility of incentives, if possibility if people would move here and if they sign in, then maybe giving them incentive. Accommodations came up as a big issue. There, there aren't any places for those people to stay right now. So I'm hoping to talk the board into buying another house. So you buy a house that inflates, it becomes worth more value. It doesn't deflate. And then we can put some of these young nurses or doctors in there. And the point that was very obvious to the mayor and I is that PMH right off the stop said, we recruit for the whole of the park as well as PMH. And we emphatically said, well, we recruit for the Swan River Valley. So I think that was imperative. And I would think for the sake of the listening audience, if you know anybody in nursing or medicine or physio, any medical professional, uh, let the mayor or myself know and we can try to arrange the contact. The PMH can't go unannounced to those people. They have to be given the invitation. There's some uh, privacy laws that they need to know about. 
Then uh, Minister Schuller, uh, we have a meeting coming up with Knights of Columbus. I had a call from one of the board of directors of Knights of Columbus. They have a significant amount of money, not six figures, that they want to donate to the CT scan, and they'll follow up with me, and I'll let the mayor and yourself go, Councillor. Uh, Dale Weeback phoned me, and I think I, I need to share this because she says, I love the library. She says, it's great staff, wonderful, cheerful books, movies, recommendations. It's saving her during COVID. It's her favorite place to go in Swan River. It's a wonderful place. So thank you, Dale, for those commendations. Then I talked to the RCMP today. There's no news uh, on the new, C, uh, new uh, staff sergeants. And the Knights of Columbus, uh, I hope not the Knights of Columbus, that money, the Minister Schumer meeting where we meet on the 15th of December, I'm going to encourage them to try to consider a process where they can communicate with our community of the good, the bad, and the ugly about turnabouts. I know we, many of us have looked into it, but I, I think some responsibility has to go back to the MI also telling us, you know, if, if you want to build this thing, which I think most of us are in agreement with, we have to get that message somehow out to our constituents. Uh, also, I talked to uh, Ada Husak at the hospital relative to some sort of a, a gift we could send from council to the uh, healthcare workers. It's really difficult with COVID. They don't want them sharing food. They want them all reaching in the same donut box, for example. But a suggestion that evolved from our discussion that maybe we borrow the brick side. Thank you, healthcare workers, town of Columbia for council. And, and, and send a card. But the food stuff, unless it's individually packed, is really difficult to get to people. So I certainly as council will talk more about that. So I think I got it all. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Uh Well, last Monday I attended the AMM, like many of you did, and it, it really highlights how, yeah, you, you can, you know, the whole world has been surviving by a Zoom meeting for the last eight or nine months, but it's such a huge contrast to previous when you had the face-to-face -face contact, not only with, with the government, but with other municipal uh, uh, councils. And, and, you know, you, you built those uh, shared connections that you just weren't able to, to capitalize on for this year. Um, so I, I guess it was what it was, but hopefully it'll be back to, uh, to normal for next year. Um, we also met with Justice. Uh, I was quite disappointed in the uh, in the report that we've been. You know, they've they've touted this report that was coming out. You know, we, for for months, if not even more than a year now. Um, and a lot of our concerns. They said, "Well, wait, wait till the report." And you know, I guess one of my, our bigger or my bigger concerns has always been the inequity with how we pay for for policing and uh, the report barely touched on it. In fact, the, the official recommendations didn't touch on it at all. The, uh, it was uh, in one of the uh, ancillary uh, portions of the report, it, it just made mention of other, that other provinces do it differently. Um, it's, and it's something that they should look at as far as legislation. So when we brought that up with, the, uh, with Justice, I was disappointed in the report, but I was happy to hear that there is, I guess, a secondary report coming out in springtime that will deal with just uh, you know how, how we pay for policing, and hopefully it'll address some of the uh, the inequalities that that we that we see on a on a yearly basis when we do our budget, uh, as compared to our neighbors surrounding us who, who don't share that same burden. Um, so looking forward to that secondary report coming in the spring, and hopefully the government's able to uh, act upon it. Um, that same day, we also had the rise meeting. Um, and one of the things we talked about was getting uh, community people on the rise board, and I, and I think that is so important. And you know, there's talk of uh, of you know a constitutional amendment to to you know maybe uh, solidify that ability. And I think that that's fine, and we should work towards that. But we either need to work towards that fairly quickly, or Town of River needs to show some leadership, and we need to you know under the current constitution, we're able to appoint somebody. Uh, especially if they're going to be going into strategic planning and and what rise is going to look like going forward, I think we need to have voices from from uh, you know the the job creators in the valley, not just municipal uh, people on there. So so I, I think we need to uh, either 
get on that constitutional amendment, even if it doesn't exactly look like what we want it to look like, at least something that gets some uh, community people on, onto the rise board. Um, and uh, other than that, I had uh, no other meetings. So I guess we had our Cal meeting that we all attended the next night that everybody was there for. So nothing else to report on. Okay, I'll go back to Councilor Gray. I just wanted to know if we've heard back from the Deputy Minister of Municipal Affairs with respect to the zoning issue. We have yeah, not. Okay. We, we said that, that we would try to go after them. So maybe uh, tomorrow, maybe we should contact them and see what's going on because we, this is pretty important stuff that uh, even the Deputy felt that it should be able to be resolved in a much quicker timeline than what uh, we had expressed it was so far. Was that everything, Councillor Gray? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, for me, uh, you all covered off on with the AMM being virtual. Uh, interesting, uh, we have having, having the AMM, considering how the AMM has been, or what we experienced in, in, in past years, and definitely the networking and all that is basically non-existent, and also the opportunity to meet with government people and and ministers and so forth, so it, it, it was very uh, strange and, and uh, in some ways it was productive, in other ways it was highly unproductive as far as our networking goes, in my opinion. Uh, the Justice Minister, we uh, covered that off already, some uh, community safety officer information as far as, and as well as the um, discussion about the um, policing costs, we'll, we'll see what that report looks like in, in the new year, something that we've been lobbying for uh, a very long time. Um, for myself, I uh, attended our vet board clinic and uh, our board meeting. And um, of that board meeting, uh, we passed our budget for 2021, as well as the fees structure for 2021. I'll say right now that there's no changes to that. And uh, the um, uh, as far as the fees go, and also the levy is not going to change at all. And uh, each of you will receive that uh, information here at, at our next meeting that I'll have presented uh, for uh, our agenda. And basically, that's uh, it for me, considering that a lot of things were already mentioned already. Um, do you have anything? Um, just an update the pool. So, the HVAC repair is just wrapping up a couple programming issues, but other than that, um, just substantial completion is done. Hot tub repair started today, so those are ongoing. Um, yeah, and we're just working on our budgets, getting those ready to present to you guys in the next, in the next little while. Okay. Councillor Gray, I have a question. Oh, do I look confused? <laughs> no, your hand is still up. Like maybe you didn't take it down. Okay. Perfect. Okay, 8.1. Resolved that Jerry Gocher be hired for position of the Chief Administrative Officer as per Schedule A for the Town of Swan River, effective December 7, 2020. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, I just want to say that uh, we uh, welcome Mr. Gautreaux for uh, accepting our offer. And it was negotiation back and forth, but we landed on an agreement and hope him uh, wish him well in his new position with us as our CEO and hopefully we move forward and uh, uh, go from there. And hopefully the uh, this whole COVID crisis doesn't delay his arrival. Um, in coming and filling the office here, because uh, I'm sure uh, the admin staff here would definitely benefit from his uh, help here um, by adding another set of hands and brains to the, the mix. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, just to comment on that, uh, Mr. Coutry and I have been having some email discussions the last week, and uh, we're looking forward to having him here in our community. And, Helping making our administration and our town uh, a better place. Uh, and I know that he is also watching us uh, via Facebook tonight, so I think he's uh, taking it all in and, and getting ready for, uh, for the, whole, uh, the whole thing in his new position. 
So any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Let's carry. Result of the customary probation period for the municipal employee benefit plan, MEPP, be waived for Jerry Gautreau. Moved by Councilor DeLaurier, seconded by Councilor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <coughs> Whereas there has been concern regarding the safety of the public regarding the practice of night hunting, and whereas there has also been population decline seen in the moose and elk in many areas of the province, and whereas Manitoba Conservation has had a broad communication strategy, including social media posts that highlight enforcement successes with regards to reducing illegal hunting activities, the communication of current successful enforcement plays an important role in determining future contravention of the law. Therefore, be it resolved that the feedback provided to Man that feedback be provided to Manitoba Conservation that they continue their effective that they that their sorry that their effective their enforcement communication strategy and more importantly be encouraged to continue their enforcement of hunting laws and regulations for the safety of all Manitobans conservation of our big game populations for future generations of Manitoba hunters. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Laurier. Discussion? Councilor White. Just a comment, I, I, I think it, there's debate about what's legal and what's illegal. This deals specifically with what is illegal, and if there's something legal, it, it's none of our concern. And if it's uh, illegal, there's lots of concern. And, and I'm thinking about uh, the safety of, of the, the valid people, specifically. And I think that when the bad guys know these things are happening, they'll be, there will be much less of it. Thank you. Councilor Gray. Ray? No, I, I was my. I had a problem. I was trying to get unmuted, and I was trying to get uh, my hand lowered. <laughs> this will come as no surprise since we've had this discussion in the county committee of the whole meeting. Uh, I speak against the resolution. I do it for a number of reasons, and I don't, um, for a second, suggest that we should not uh, take seriously compliance with the law. Um, and in fact, I agree with one thing that um, uh, Councillor White has just said, which is that uh, we should necessarily, as citizens, be opposed to the breach, any breach of the law. Um, and uh, I recognize that this is about breaches of the law. Having said that, this is a resolution. I've spoken on this in, on a number of pre previous occasions. Um, not so much in our council, and this is one of the few times that we've ventured into this kind of an area. This is nothing to do with us. This is a in wholly inappropriate resolution for a town council that has nothing to do with municipal governance, and it is wholly inappropriate. Moreover, it's a partisan issue, and, and I resent, quite candidly, the injection of partisan politics into council meetings. And lastly, this is viewed very badly in um, the entire in, Indigenous community uh, as being part of a plan by the particular government. And I don't want to get into a debate about the government. It is, this is not the forum for that, and I am not going to um, go further than that. But I cannot imagine what the motivation would be or why it would be in our interest to engage on something that is none of our business. It is wholly inappropriate. Um, what what type of feedback would we be giving medical and medical countries? You like you want to talk to the minister about the, uh, like or just a note of, of support, of like a letter? Yeah. Okay. And uh, it, it, 
And I hate to disagree with my learned colleague up there on the far right, I notice he's on the right today, that uh, the safety of our constituents is a council concern. And uh, many, many people in the Swan River Valley, our constituents, have the right to safe hunting. And illegal night hunting for those who are illegally doing it is not right. I'm speaking for a second time. So if there's another counselor who wishes to speak, I, I uh, will wait uh, until they've had an opportunity. Does anybody else want to speak on that? It's your floor. Thank you. I agree with my learned friend that safety of our citizens is an issue for us. That is, should we have safe streets and sidewalks? Should we do everything that we need to do to make the community that we're in safer? Absolutely within the ambit of a municipal council. When we engage or venture into other issues, there is no stopping on that. And you will all recall any number of occasions from other councils where there was unanimous concern that other councils had expressed um, opinions on things which are clearly outside of their mandate. It is a dangerous precedent. Okay, further discussion? Councilor Moran. Um, so I'm a little confused here as to what Councilor Gray just said. Um, because we've passed numerous resolutions to support for increased increased broadband for our residents of the valley um, and whatnot, but our ratepayers within the, the town of Swan River has access to pretty significant broadband capabilities with providers that are already in town. So I'm having difficulty trying to correlate what Councilor Gray um, is drawing the line there. I can explain that. Yeah, broadband or um, cellular service or other services that bring things to the community are in fact directly related to the community. They are related to our mandate with respect to services that are provided in the community, whether it's economic development. And had my learned friend or had Mr. Uh, my colleague, Mr. Or Councillor White, framed it that we encourage enforcement. Um, in order to enhance um, tourism or something of that nature, the uh, resolution would be in order. It is, in my opinion, in its current wording, wholly in out of order. But that's the distinction. If it's related to something that's related that is within the boundaries of the jurisdiction of our council, of course we should comment on it. If it's outside the boundaries of that, and how, unless you're talking about night lighting in the town of Swan River or some other illegal hunting in the town of Swan River that I'm unaware of, because I'm not aware of anybody who hunts in the town of Swan River, then I don't understand how it could be related, how the resolution as drafted could relate to anything that is within our jurisdiction. Councilor Well, you know, on, on Councilor Morio's line of thinking, um, you know, it's, it's tweaked something as far as uh, tourism is, is the third largest industry in our, in our community. It's a, it, and hunting plays a significant portion of that. So the fact that this resolution speaks to the safety of hunting and the uh, sustainability of big game animals, I think, speaks directly to uh, to you know something that is a concern of ours as far as uh, uh, as far as how how it impacts our economy. I mean, hunting plays a huge role in our economy, and uh, I'm sure any hotelier or uh, or restaurant here during non-COVID times, obviously, would probably uh, tell you that and. Sure, there's not hunting that goes on directly within the town, but we sure, surely benefit from it. So why? Just uh, our, our constituents leave the boundaries. And I'm hoping we as a council say, I don't worry about them. I'm not saying, would you leave Swan River? We don't worry about you. So I'm not sure that's being said, but I think I do personally worry about them outside. This is 
it's safety and it's saving animals. It's, the bad guys are going to uh, know that things are happening. I'm struggling to see why anybody would be against letting people know. Okay. <coughs> Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <coughs> Eight three one. Resolve the request to have an outdoor arena on the green space behind Five Park Drive be approved for the 2020-21 winter season, conditional on all requirements of the draft outdoor rink of public reserve policy being compiled with. Exception will be given for not meeting the requirement to be 25 meters from the property line as the arena has already been Constructed. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Uh, can we just confirm, or has it been confirmed, that there's been no objection from the neighborhood and surrounding properties regarding that? And secondly, that uh, the individual who went ahead with this is fully aware and is in agreement of the conditions put forth. We are. Uh, we've spoken to him and let him know they haven't gone through the entire agreement with him yet, but in, in generalities, he was happy to comply with those. those um, and we haven't heard any objections from the neighbors yet. Not all of them have been told, but we haven't heard any objections from them. Okay. And as I recall, those rakes in the public venue would be open to the public. So we can't just say family X is only one to use it because family X built it. Right. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? But, well, so great. but it's my understanding that it wouldn't be accessible to anyone until after the red removed. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Eight three one. Eight point four. Result of the outdoor rink on public reserve policy be approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Eight point five. Whereas COVID-19 has impacted the operation of our recreation facilities, therefore be it resolved that the aquatic center remain closed to the public until COVID-19 limitations are less restrictive. This date will be confirmed at a later time. Also be it resolved that the pool will be filled beginning in January to allow all systems to be checked and maintained. Moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Remind me again when the, the work on the hot tub portion is, is it commenced already? already? It started today, it should be done by the end of next week. Okay, um, so is there's no concern about uh, not, not needing to put water in sooner than January as far as you know anything drying out, seals, orange, or anything like that? There's a few things they need to passivate the the stainless steel, they need oh, to um, right. do some copying those sorts of things. Okay. So they will do that in preparation okay. to be ready okay. for January. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Mm -hmm. 8 6. Result of the Aquatic Center rental fees be waived for the SBRSS Lifeguard Credit Program at 2021 due to the implications of COVID-19. Moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion, Councilor Morio. Um, this is a worthwhile project that we um, need to continue supporting. Um, so I believe this is our feeder line of the lifeguards for the uh, aquatic center. So uh, it's imperative that uh, after COVID, knowing that uh, a large number of our current lifeguards have sought and obtained employment in other locations, so they may not be available to uh, return to uh, employment with uh, the town at the aquatic center. So it's proven that we uh, assist uh, 
SDRSS in uh, completing this course and have a new line of uh, lifeguards available to us uh, for employment. For the discussion, also be worried. I assume there will be a letter going to the school division regarding this. Yes. Can make sure that we state emphatically that this is for 2021 only. It's not, you know, it's, it's special circumstances. So that, you know, not to expect this every year going forward. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Result that, all, result that authorization be given for sorry authorize, result that authorization be given for replacement of one boiler at the aquatic center up to sixty thousand dollars. The expenditure will be funded from a combination of reserve and operation contributions or capital borrowing. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Uh, for clarification um, in the resolution where it says to uh, be funded from the combination of reserves and operational contributions or capital borrowing, uh, that is not new borrowing, that is uh, within the current uh, borrowing bylaw that we passed this year for the repairs. Yeah, we're being affected with the So it's it's no not authorizing any additional capital borrowing. It's just to be included within the realms of what's been approved for that borrowing by our Good. Further discussion, Councillor Gray. Um, it's it's actually not expected that we'll be able to tender that until the new year. So it, whether it'll be under new or existing borrowing is sort of immaterial because it has to be rebudgeted in that year. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.8. .8. Result of authorization be given for the installation of an access door in the maintenance tower at the aquatic center up to fifteen thousand dollars. The expenditure will be funded from a combination of reserve and operation contributions or capital borrowing. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor with Tony. Discussion. Discussion. Uh, just just one point, Your Worship. One of the things that uh, we didn't talk about at the committee of the whole meeting, but I think we should, is we this is not typically speaking a repair issue but it's certainly something that is a design issue and i am actually a little amazed that an engineer and an architect would have designed something that would require us to break the law in order to replace the boilers and so i think we might want to advise council uh, on that and raise that issue in the lawsuit good point and definitely as a safety and a uh design flaw for sure. Uh, Council Mike. I know we've uh, broached the concept before. Do we not have insurance on these spoilers, on these parts that are breaking down prematurely? And there was a letter went out a while back, but maybe now with more information, it's appropriate to send another request saying, hey, this is a $60,000 thing, it's hardly been used, and it's dead. Where's our, do we have insurance for that? The warranty, we don't have warranty for the insurance on it. You could inquire about insurance. Doesn't hurt to ask. It may seem it might be premature, but the, the lifespan of these boilers were told was potentially around 12 years, and it's been about 10 years since they're there, so they're almost at their life expectancy already. So um, anybody that owns a significant building is quite aware that they have to replace boilers. So. Uh, periodically and this one it's a little bit early but uh, I know there's challenges with atmosphere and all that in there that could have contributed to them going a little sooner than earlier but uh, um, this is a, a repair that will be coming within the next few years already. And the point of uh, Councilor Gray bringing up the fact that we should bring forth to Council 
Councilor Gray. You're muted still. Councilor Gray, you're muted. Start a gun. Um, I, I'm a little confused about the insurance issue um, because I'm not sure under what head of insurance it would be. It's not, um, it's just, it's worn out. Um, we don't have insurance for things wearing out. What we're supposed to do is have a, um, a shrink fund or a, a replacement reserve, which we didn't have for, for this particular item, but we, we should, you know, we know that these things exist, so we should be in our upcoming budgets putting these kind of things into the replacement reserve. So if we put, you know, one twelfth of the cost in every year, uh, we won't have the problem in 12 years. Now I won't have the problem anyway, but um, those of you who are still on the council then will, won't have the problem. I agree that the insurance is probably a dead end road, but why council So if, uh, if our staff, for example, at that time, had done something to operate the equipment inappropriately or incorrectly. I don't know if chemicals, we put the wrong chemicals in. We've had those issues with some other things over there. So that was uh, things that we did inappropriately. And if my, if I drive my car and I hit a ditch, I have insurance. So if our staff did something wrong, do we not have insurance? If it's just worn out, I accept that completely. But I'm not sure there's a connection or not. We can explore the option. Doesn't cost any money to that. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.1. Resolve, resolve that the checks or the accounts as follows we hear by, like I talked about, here by proof of payment. General accounts checks number 26953 to number 27011 for a total of 397000 $33.71. Payroll accounts checks number 4761 to 4767 for a total of $9,728.42. Direct deposits transfer totaling $700 for cell phone allowances. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. 26965 and 26975. Um, I guess, what kind of pins are these for $50 that we've purchased? Like, are these like pins you wear on your lapel? Or I just, I just can't imagine what went across $50 a pin. So, what I'm hearing is that you have a to the department, um, they do not get paid for when they go on training. We pay their expenses, but they don't get paid to go on all those training. Um, so it's something that was budgeted, and uh, if they purchase it as a thank you to the firefighters. Okay. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm gonna have to digest what I what I just heard here, but I was just a little taken aback by the cost per pin. Um, especially in the context of, uh, of you know, we've, you know, cut the overtime for, you know, street cleaning in the winter. And, you know, we, this fall, we came down pretty hard on making sure we followed budgets, which, um, but I, I guess hearing what the, what the reasoning is, I'll, I'll process that. So. Councilor Gray. I, I have the same question, but I have a different, um, question because I don't I, I, I could be wrong and I, and I stand to be corrected but I don't recall this budget item being anywhere in the budget now maybe it was buried in something else but I have to tell you a seven um, where is, where is the amount twenty three hundred dollar item for pins um, is something that I would have thought would have been brought to our attention I am stunned quite candidly by it and, and I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't have done it or i guess it's 1250 dollars i'm not saying we shouldn't have done it but it's something that should be brought to our attention if we're going to spend 50 dollars a pin and uh, you know I, I i don't know what we're gonna have to do in terms of getting the budgeting piece done but i'd like to know where it was put in the budget because if, if it was put in and i missed it then i'll uh, i'll hold that but um uh, I, I don't think it was put in. Uh, Mr. Ganita? 
IME, uh, just looking at the website for Manitoba Fallen Firefighters, and it says uh, we have received our shipment of the Manitoba Fallen Firefighters Memorial Pin, which will be a one-time only limited edition pin that a person will receive with a donation of $50 or more. So it seems to be a donation rather than a purchase. Okay, thank you. Uh, I guess just a comment on Councillor Councillor Grace. I have no doubt that there's some line item in some budget, as far as the fire department that probably had this, and and you know that we don't get this. You know during our budgeting process, maybe that's something we need to talk about. You bring up a good point. Is as far as uh, we don't delve into to the minutia of individual budgets, and that may be something that. You know, maybe not everyone, but maybe we audit certain ones. Uh, you know, every on a cyclical basis, just 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 to be, you know, even just to familiarize ourselves with with how the budgets are put together. We see bottom line numbers from from different departments, but that's always been a, a concern of mine as well. But it always uh, you have to ride that line of, of what's our role and, and 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 how much micromanagement do we do but i think it's totally within our role to be able to to look as deep as we want to um on any particular budget and i'm not saying we do it for every single one but i think we do need to audit them uh, um on a, on a regular basis uh, with that do we know if that if this fund's actually coming out in general or out of the uh firefighters Association's fund. Like, do we look after that fund or and then administer it? Um, I'm not sure. Mr. Dean, is you want to answer that question? Uh, this was charged to the Town of Swan River budget uh, firefighting. Okay. Okay. Mr. Dean, did you have a further question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no, I just forgot to lower my hand. Okay. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E, set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed below. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed at Schedule A be attached be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in that matter under subsections 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to the property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same Manner is for unpaid property taxes effective January the first, two thousand and twenty-one. Moved by Councillor uh, uh, Sorry, Deputy Mayor Watoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. All in favor? Oh, just one moment, Your Worship. Okay, uh, Councillor Gray. Uh, um, are, unless I'm missing something, I just want to get clarification. All but two of these appear to be garbage and, site and recycling, which presumably are related to various businesses. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. That's correct. Is that not Mr. Cole? Yeah. Okay. It should be non-residential properties. <clears throat> Okay, <laughs> fair enough, non-residential properties. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Ten point three. Resolved that follows the following contributions budgeted in the 2020 financial plan be made from the general operating fund the following funds. Equipment replacement reserve, $160,000. Fire truck replacement reserve, $15,000. Employee benefits reserve, $5,000. Reserve for table, rental table and chairs, $2,000. Recreation facility reserve for major repairs, $10,000. And heavy transit van operating fund, $25,840. Moved by. Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? 
No, I, I, I put my hand up and then I realized I'd turn the video off because I was going to scratch my ear and you yeah. <laughs> Okay. You know what? Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The video, if you were in, in live here and, and you scratched here, it would be no different if you're live on the, on the, on the video up there right now too. Fortunately, where I'm sitting, nobody can see me. Ten point four resulted the five hundred dollar contribution included in the two thousand twenty solar handed transit van operated budget be made for the handy transit van vehicle replacement reserve. Moved by Councilor Friesen, second by Councilor Gray. Discussion. All in favor. Ten point five. Whereas the capital budget for the year two thousand and twenty included twenty thousand dollars for sidewalks to be borne by the federal gas tax reserve, and such sidewalks have been installed at a cost of twenty one thousand four hundred forty five dollars and three cents. Therefore, be it resolved that twenty thousand dollars be transferred from the federal gas tax reserve fund to the general operating fund. Moved by. Deputy Mayor O'Doherty, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.6. Whereas the town of Swanberg incurred a general fund operating deficit of $220,824.74 for the year 2018, and whereas a balance of $42,808.13 of that deficit remains to be recovered. Resolved that $42,808.13 be transferred from the general operating fund to the accumulated surplus to recover the remaining balance of 2018 deficit. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor DeLaurier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Seven. Whereas the 2020 financial plan for the utility operating fund included $271,561 transferred to the utility reserve, be it hereby resolved that the lesser of $271,561 for the utility operating fund net operating surplus for the 2020 fiscal year be transferred from the utility operating fund to the water and sewer reserve fund. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Deputy Mayor Tony. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. Why, uh, what would, if the surplus was greater than that amount, what, what, what are we doing with the remainder of the surplus? Why, why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we put whatever's greater into the uh, reserve? Mr. Ganita? I guess I just assumed that uh, we wouldn't go over what was budgeted. Okay. Um, but but if we what what would what would the surplus in the utility reserve where would that money go if there was if there was a surplus in excess of two seventy one it would presumably the reserve sorry Gary go ahead it, it would remain in the utility nominal surplus discussion does the utility nom nominal surplus have the same restrictions as our you know, uh, as the general nominal surplus for the town does as far as needing a certain threshold before you can use any of that money? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. The, the public utilities board uses a different measure. They go by something called working capital surplus, which is a different calculation. Um, so along with that line, if there is not those restrictions, or if there was, and if we were in excess of that amount, if there was a surplus, uh, wouldn't it be prudent to apply any of that surplus to any of the debentures that we got, um, nearly completed or outstanding in that uh, account? Yeah. 
I guess if, if Terry, you don't have an answer, uh, yeah, but we would have to obviously wait until, like, in the case we do have a surplus over 270000 uh, that would have to be handled at next year's budget, but I believe that's possible. I would need to check with the financial institutions if there's an early payment penalty, but with respect to the situation for the utility at, at present uh, with the, the well-controlled building going um, over 100000 over budget, then that I don't think will be over the budgeted uh, transfer to utility reserve. Yeah. Um, both Mr. Ganita and Mr. Poole have already um, stolen all the questions or thunder that I want to say. So I'm, I, I was going to suggest that we have a report on it for the next budget period. Um, if we're not going to be over, what does it matter? For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Okay. 10.8. Whereas subsection 306.1 provides that a municipality may cancel reduced taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alteration done by Manitoba Assessment Services on November the 16, 2020, be made. 2020 property tax roll resulting in a reduction of $123. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Now, I, I, I don't know, uh, before we did that, I should have asked this question. I'm sorry, Your Worship, but it, it, is that correct? I, I'm a member, and I assume most of us are members in one way or another. Um, it's $123. I, I'm assuming that that's not a conflict, since it's, um, although it's a cooperative, but it's not nothing I have a direct financial interest in. I, I would agree that you're Mr. Benito, do you want to respond to that or comment on that? Or Patty? I don't see it as a conflict issue at all. Okay, 10.9. Result of the annual contribution to the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation Incorporated on the doctor retention and recruitment fund of $16 per capita in the amount of $64,224 for payment. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wittoni. Discussion? Councillor White. Uh, I think it's appropriate to, to want to do the donation, absolutely. I think the title has changed. I don't think it's any longer, and I think we passed that a couple of three G5s ago, that it was called Medical Professional Re Recruitment and Retention. So I, I think it's a little misleading as it is. Conceptually, go for it. But I think it's appropriate that we change the descriptor. Okay. I'd like to make a motion if that's appropriate that we just change it to. We can make a friendly amendment to the resolution. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mr. Ganita, it's probably something that we can't do right now, right? Well, I was just going to say that all the correspondence that comes from the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation with respect to that fund refers to it as the G7 Physician Retention and Recruitment Fund, so they haven't even changed it from G7 to G4, let alone change the word physician to medical professional. So uh, I guess it would be a matter of communicating to the foundation that holds that money and trust that the uh, name needs to be changed. Okay, well, I'm on the board, so I can bring that forward. Well, I was just going to ask if you can bring that forward, because we have, all the municipalities have passed resolutions, I think as far back as 2017, reflecting what Councillor White is saying. Okay. Councillor Gray. Nothing, I, I, it's already covered. You're going to cover it, and, and I think we just go ahead and pass it now and move on. Yep. For the discussion, 
All in favor? Approved? It's carried. <clears throat> Eleven point one. Resolve that bylaw number 2020-2020 be the bylaw of the town of Swan River to regulate the proceedings and conduct the conduct of the council and the committees, therefore be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, close to 13. Result of the result of pursuance. Go ahead. Um, uh, we can add them in, in, in the thing, but the, we were going to discuss the roundabout and the uh, referral from Rise about the hospitality tax. Are we going to discuss those in, in camera? We will. Thank you. Okay. Result of pursuance to sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act, committee, and close the meeting to the public. We, uh, we have negotiations. Donation, as we'll talk about the roundabout, and we'll also discuss uh, the uh, other thing that Councilor Gray mentioned about the um, sorry. hospitality tax. Okay, the hospitality tax. Okay, perfect. Moved by Councilor Friesen, second by Councilor Gray. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <coughs> 